Hello everybody and welcome back to Pokemon 3Ds and last episode when we left off we got here in Goldenrod City and I figured let's not go wild with catching Pokemon quite yet. Let's wait until the next episode which is the episode we're watching right now to go wild with catching a couple more Pokemon. We've got two more Pokemon to capture today. Uh, I could wait with one of them. Uh, theoretically speaking, we might have three more Pokemon to catch actually now. It's a very good point. I don't know how many Pokemon we have in this episode to catch, but we've got we've got a few. We've got a fair few Pokemon to capture, and we still don't have anything to deal with fire types, really. So let's just hope Aspirin learns a water type move soon. Otherwise, we're going to be royally screwed at some point. It's not like they can do anything against us either, because we've got two Pokemon that like resist fire type moves. We just don't have anything that is super effective against fire type. I'm a special attacker anyway. It doesn't matter. Special attack anyway. Physical attack getting cut in half. Doesn't matter. Just not gonna have. I'm just not gonna be able to use Scratch at all in this battle. But I was really planning to anyway. What is your like? What is your stats like? It, you you really do seem very disappointing. Uh, let's see your stats. Your special attack is thirty. It's not that low. Like compared to Tian, which is only one level higher. His physical attack, her physical attack, I'm sorry. Okay, that's 46. That's significantly higher. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, so Aspirin is just not that good of a Pokemon. Let's go into Kurt instead. And yeah, Confusion definitely has to be special because it's Psychic. I was a little bit like confused there for a moment. Maybe it's physical. No, it's, it's Confusion. It's a Psychic type move. And even after the physical special split in Gen 4, it's still a special move. Confusion's never not been a special move. Bite, on the other hand, is a special move in this generation. Whereas it is a physical move in any good Pokemon game. I, I don't mean to call this game bad. I just... I think Gen 1, honestly, it's just bad. Just not worth playing in. If you want to play Gen 1, play Fire Red Leaf Green. Or better yet, just let it go. Uh, though those are very different kind of games, in my opinion, anyway. Um, but there's no reason other than, like... Historic curios uh, curiosity to play uh, any of the Gen 1 games in 2020. There just isn't any reason to. They're just actually not good games. And, of course, in in its time, I, uh, I understand they were revolutionary and amazing. And I was looking back through my In Retrospect playlist to some of the videos that got a decent to, like, a lot of views. Uh, this amounts to a lot of views and the word like most of the things that got a lot of views in, in retrospect 45 I've done so far which is more than I thought I had actually um, the the most amount of views I got was on uh, Disney's 102 Dalmatians and then also on the Tarzan minigame and I think I did one on the Bugs Life pretty much like all the Disney video games uh, and Simba's Mighty Adventure uh, the Lion King uh, 2 video game, PlayStation 1 got a fair amount of views, and then I've got some on Harry Potter, which got a decent amount of views, but mostly the Disney ones got a good amount of views. But I've also done one on Pokemon Red and Blue, as a matter of fact, that was the first one I've done, and uh, it's not that good of a video, granted, but it also got a decent amount of views, because a uh, certain um, semi pokemon nintendo gaming related youtube channel which had at least at the time a decent following i don't know how they're doing now uh because at a certain point i just like unsub to their channel because i, I got annoyed by things uh <laughs> i won't go into like too much detail um if you really want to do i mean you can just go to the video and look at the comment section and you'll probably understand who i'm talking about but um if you care that much, you care more than me. Uh, but I was looking back through that, and uh, I saw he left a comment, which was the reason that the video uh, got a lot of views in the first place, because it was back in a time where, leaving a comment on a video, your subscribers could actually uh, see the activity, I think. Or maybe uh, he had his Twitter linked or something like that, to where uh, every time he commented on a video, a link to that video got tweeted out as well, and it got me like 300 views on the video, which was very nice for me. Um, but looking back at that comment, it was actually kind of like a bit of a dick thing to say, because, um... 
he, he said some like nice video, but uh, he disagreed with my score I gave because back then I, I gave scores for my um, for my retrospectives, and I gave it a five out of ten, which I think is fairly generous for Pokemon Red and Blue, to be honest, because. Again, they're broken pieces of shit, and some people in the comment section agreed with me and told him so. Uh, but he said, um, giving it a 5 out of 10 uh, because it doesn't stack up to today's standards is insane. And I honestly think that that is a little bit rude to say in a comment section of somebody you don't know. I don't know, maybe, maybe he didn't mean anything bad by it, and he probably didn't, but uh, he also was like... The content he made, I, I I did unsub because similar kinds of like just being a dick, <laughs> honestly. Uh, again, might have been like it's been years. So he might not have been active anymore uh, today. He might be active and like a totally different kind of person today. Time changes people. Uh, so if you like do care about who this is about and you, you go look it up. Um, so take this with a grain of salt, I have no idea what he's like now. But at the time, when he left that comment, and when I was watching his video, I felt like it was kind of a dick, right? Um, but that did make me think. Because even though I feel a little bit personally attacked there, I can see a bit of uh, constructive criticism in there. Even if it was like just meant as just criticism and not constructive criticism. I, I can see some feedback in there, and that is, um, you shouldn't, you shouldn't argue about games that were made 20, 30 years ago in context of today, and, um, I thoroughly, thoroughly disagree with that notion. Uh, I also do a weekly, uh, film podcast. And um, we, we were on like a hiatus or half a year there as well because I was moving and things were busy in life. But we pack, uh, packed, picked it up uh, recently again. And I was like, okay, so we should put down a little bit like more strict uh, guidelines or rules as to how we rate these films. Because one of the things we were rating them on uh, was v uh, visual effects and post-production. But obviously, if you're going to be talking about a movie from the, the 80s, it's not really fair to say, well, it, it, it looks like shit. Uh, because it's 2020 now, and it's literally been 40 years, and we've already got you. So I'm going to uh, say noobs close to you. So we, we argued for that. Well, argued, not really argued. We discussed that for a moment, and we ended up with no. Because at the moment we're discussing it, people that are watching it, um, I'm tr we're trying to like paint the picture and I'm so glad I just got that Jigglypuff, you have no idea. <laughs> uh, and we give a recommendation and that recommendation is for people watching the video. Should you play this game? Should you view this movie? And we already have one of you as well. Um, why does it say I have a fear out? Did I not make Destroyer back into a Spiro? I might not have. Huh. Anyway, so um, we choose to rate movies based... Uh, movie CGI specifically. I'm so happy with it. we're getting a Quagsire. Um, I'm probably not going to put it on a team right now, but if like either Kurtz or Aspirin dies, Quagsire is on the team right away. Well, anyway, so, um, yeah, people watching the video or the podcast or whatever, um, the recommendation, they're going to be watching it today in 2020 if I say this is definitely worth playing or worth watching. I don't really give a shit how things looked back in context because people watching the uh, things I make now aren't going to watch it in 1999. They're going to watch it in 2020. So I'll look through it in a perspective of if you experience this game... I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> if you experience this game for the first time now, today, how are you going to like it? Or movie, obviously. And I think that is a bit of a philosophy difference. And I also think that uh, most people that disagree with that 
I've heard disagree with that anyway. I haven't talked about a lot of um, about this with a lot of people, granted. But generally, when I hear people disagree with that, uh, the arguments I hear are mostly nostalgia based, and that is a very good Pokemon for me to get. I think, generally speaking, that is uh, the best way of of covering all the media through today's lens, because there's a lot of things that were pretty good at the time, but just don't look good at all anymore these days. I'm gonna be honest with you, Star Wars, the original Star Wars movies, even though any like 12 year old with After Effects can replicate most of those effects these days, um, the lightsaber effects that is, the production, I'm not paying attention. <laughs> The production quality and like the miniatures and the way everything is composited together. Yeah, it doesn't look like a modern Star Wars movie or something like a Marvel movie or anything. I think this is the same route I was just at. This is a different route, so we can capture a Pokemon here as well. Um, but it still looks good. So if I was going to have to rate like Star Wars on CGI, it wouldn't get a very low rating. But I wouldn't give it a 10 either because it was revolutionary at the time. Because it was the 1980s. And yeah, it was revolutionary at the time. But if anybody's going to watch Star Wars right now, and I, I say the CGI, I'm giving it a 10. They're going to go in expecting very... Probably not. They're probably going to realize it was at the time and um, it, in the context of the time and all that kind of bullshit. But... Generally, what I'm trying to get at here is um, I don't think you should rate things based on the time context. Uh, usually, anyway. I, I, it's literally only Eevees in here. I think there might literally only be Eevee in there. So, we're going to go for the Sudowoodo capture here, I, I guess? I, I don't know. Sudowoodo is like level 30 now, isn't it? It can't be. Can't be level 30, surely. I honestly don't know. Uh, do we have enough time after that entire, like, run? Uh, run? Wow, I, I can't talk. After that entire run to uh, also go into the gym? We might not, and I might just, like, have this be a bit of a short episode as a result. Again, Jodo is going to be a fairly, like, quick region as it is, so there might be some shorter episodes in here as a result of that. Um, if I have to walk back to the gym and then actually do the gym and I don't think I've got enough time in this episode to do that then again I probably do I, I might I, I honestly don't know so is there any more grass down here no that's right 35 um, but I can go through here so right 36 we're still open to capturing Pokemon up I know where I'm going to be grinding. If I have to grind again anytime soon. Um, hello, Celebi! Uh, we haven't seen a legendary Pokemon in a couple of episodes. Last episode, we didn't see any. The episode before that, I don't think we saw. We saw the Articuno. But that was a wild Pokemon. Did we see the Articuno in, last, uh, in two episodes ago, or was it literally just off screen? I don't remember. Before that, we obviously, in the Union Cave, we saw the Ho-Oh. And that was a critical hit. Okay, I need to get max damage. And a critical hit. Both. What? Do I have superpowers? I think I have a su I, I think I do. I didn't even need that. Because as long as Celebi didn't get another critical hit... I might want to learn Rage. It's a very good move if used properly. And it's much better than Growl anyway. <laughs> so... Yeah, we just killed Celebi. That doesn't matter. Celebi can just go in time before it died. It, uh, it doesn't matter that much. So we can't capture anything on that route yet because obviously it's uh, everything we can capture there is dupes clots. And we're not going to make it back in time to do the gym if we have to do these trainers as well. So I'm just going to fight a lot of trainers. 
And then we're going to call it an episode, and then next time we're going to do the gym. I'm very sorry for that, but... Just this fight alone. It's three Pokémon, and then we'd have to still walk back, and there's still a couple of uh, trainers in the gym we have to take care of, and... You literally still can't do anything, but you're Teddy, you're still level 10, so you can probably Oko, thank you, yeah. Uh, and then we have Whitney herself, which is going to be uh, probably at least somewhat difficult, so... Yeah, I'm going to say that that's probably going to be a very long episode if I do that all in today's episode. Uh, you are a Steel-type now. I did forget that for a moment. Gen 1 got me. I should have gone into Blaze, because again, you are a Steel-type now, which makes you weak to fire. Which actually doesn't make a lot of sense. Is Steel Metal in the Japanese translation of the game? I know in the TCG, Steel uh, apparently is Metal type. But of all the like Metals, Steel like can take a lot of heat. Steel takes fire very well, actually. <laughs> steel doesn't melt. Like, obviously Steel melts. But steel doesn't melt until, like, very, very high temperatures. There are metals, obviously, um, like tungsten, which melts at even, even higher temperatures than steel. But steel is up there. Um, and steel also, of course, is an alloy, whereas tungsten uh, is just, like, a, a base metal. Is tungsten... Tungsten is just, like... I, I don't have, have the periodic table, like, memorized at all. Is tungsten an element? It must be. Tungsten is not a... it's not an alloy, I'm, I'm fairly certain. Let's, let's look this up. We're googling this. Uh, I'll also just google, like, the melting temperatures for both. These are the things I care about because um, of the magic system I'm writing, which has something to do with, like, Heat and energy transfer. Uh, I won't give too much detail into that, though. Um, tungsten. There we go. Tungsten, chemical element. It is number 74 atomic. Symbol W. Uh, are you a water type? I always forget what you're typing. I think you're normal water. Or just normal. Normal dragon? I think you're not a dragon, but you should be a dragon. I think that's how it works. I'm fairly sure that you are normal either way, though, so I'm just going to karate chop you. Um, so tungsten is, in fact, uh, just a, a like a base metal. It's not an alloy, as I just, just said. Um, tungsten melting... No, not melting. Melting point. Let's see what that is. Uh, the tungsten melting temperature is 3,422 degrees Celsius. For anybody uh, in the US of A, that is 6,192 degrees Fahrenheit for tungsten, which is fucking insane. Uh, so yeah, tungsten is like one of the hardest metals to melt, I do believe. Uh, let's see, steel is a bit more difficult because obviously uh, steel being an alloy can have slightly different compositions and there's like a lot of different versions of steel. Um, but generally speaking, uh, iron um, melts at 1510 degrees Celsius, which is 2750 Fahrenheit. Um, and steel often melts at lower temperatures? That doesn't seem right. That, that does not seem right. That, that doesn't seem right at all. You can definitely melt iron at lower temperatures than steel. Right? Right? I'm fairly sure you can. Look, I'm, I'm no, like, expert at this. As a matter of fact, I might be the most amateur you can get about this, but I have been doing a bit of research into this kind of thing because I need to know how much um, how much energy certain metals can hold, uh, again, for, uh, for my writing. So, I think we're going to call the episode here today. Um, again, I don't know how long this episode is going to be. I think we're a little bit short on time if I'm going to end it here. I think we're a little bit like 20 minutes in, but there's not much more I can do. 
We can't catch the Eevee, so we need to wait until uh, after the gym to capture something at Route 36. I'm not going to go into the gym right now because, again, we have like five minutes. Actually, we might have a little bit more than five minutes. I don't know. Should I? Let's see. I think we can avoid most of the trainer battles, actually. If we do this clever. But we definitely should go to the Pokemon Center before, shouldn't we? <laughs> oh, we did. Never mind. We did. Uh, I think... If we're clever about this, we don't actually have to fight, like... A lot of trainers at all. As a matter of fact, I think we only have to battle two trainers. And the gym leader, obviously. So we can do this this episode. We're going to do this and we're going to not be talking anymore about steel. I'm going to keep googling about like the melting point of uh, stainless steel here. Um, iron melting point of 1500 roughly. Um, nickel is a little bit higher still compared to the range of 14 to 14 50 of stainless steel. Apparently steel melts at a lower point than iron. Which I did not know. I could have sworn its melting point was like 2000 degrees uh, Celsius. Again, it does, of course, depend on... Yeah, here we go. We've got carbon steel, which is about 1500, and then stainless steel, which is also about 1500, depending. That's both in Celsius. So, I was just wrong. I was just straight up wrong. Okay, that, that's good to know. So, there's no reason, like, to use steel in my story to, like... To give you a very brief, like, summary of uh, what the function is, I, I need, like... I need something, a metal, to function uh, in the magic system almost as if it were a battery. And I was thinking about using steel for that. But because it's fairly, like, easy to, to make, to, it's fairly prevalent, right? Um, but now that I see that iron has a higher melting point, there's no reason for me to use steel. I should just use iron. And then obviously you can also use tungsten uh, in, in situations where um, you have a, like a little bit more wealthy people might be able to like use a tungsten battery that way because it holds even more heat. But yeah, I, again, I'm not going to go into too much detail, especially since uh, I'm very early on in the writing process. Uh, I'm like two years in, but I'm very early on in the writing process. I'm still like largely developing the details of the magic system and, and the world and I've got I've got like a rough draft of the first like half of um of a first story the first book but not much more than that so uh yeah this uh this gym ended up being fairly underwhelming <laughs> especially since your ace pokemon is a whooper and I am a little over level, it seems like. So we're not going to be grinding between episodes, like, at all. And next episode, we're going to go capture some more Pokemon and then make our way towards Morty's gym, I think. And beat that one as well, probably. Huh. And we are going to have a lot more captures. And after that episode, that's 2,000 Poke Dollars. Okay. Oh yeah, we didn't cry after you beat her. That, that's right. I, yeah, I want a badge. I very much like a badge. And that's what's up. Thank you very much. I don't know why I, why I wanted to, like, I muted my, my speaker after the message came in. But even so, I'm recording my desktop audio. So, it would still record into the audio track even if I couldn't hear it. Uh, I do usually tend to, like, try and mute the audio track when that happens because lord knows how annoying it is when you 
Can you just walk this way? You can. Okay. Uh, Lord knows how annoying it is when you're trying to watch a YouTube video and somebody doesn't close their Facebook uh, or WhatsApp or like Discord and they get a message and that gets into the audio recording and then I check my own to see that there's no messages for me and then I feel very lonely and I notice how worthless life actually is. That being said, I never use Facebook and I even like still check my tabs when I hear a Facebook notification in a YouTube video. That's how ingrained that is into my brain, even though I haven't used Facebook like properly for like two years. I still like visit Facebook somewhat often, but mostly like for professional related purposes, right? And I know that every, everybody says that and most people that say that are very hipster and I might fall a little bit into the category, but it's honestly true. I just have like a couple of pages and like group communities open to see if there's like anything, anybody that's trying to give me money pretty much. Like see if there's any jobs around. Um, but I'm not going to talk about that right now. Maybe next episode. Until then, I'm a vlogger. You've been awesome as always. Bye.